Um, so I kind of want to talk a little bit about here, if you don't mind, uh, like kind of, you know, your experience doing the shadow program a little bit. Um, I'm really, really curious to hear, obviously we've talked a little bit over the last few days, like what, I guess your overall experience has kind of been so far. And I'm not asking this like, Oh, you <laughs> tell me how great everything is. <laughs> but like, what are some big takeaways that you've kind of seen that you, cause you mentioned a couple of things you're like excited to start to like implement a little bit and stuff like that, mm -hmm. that you think might be beneficial for other trainers in your position to hear. Um, I think definitely, I mean, I told you this the other day, a big thing that I've been learning has been stuff about myself as a trainer um not stuff that i necessarily didn't know but didn't realize how big of issues they were um <laughs> my biggest one is making things way too complicated for owners mm -hmm. um caring about certain things that they don't and will never care about they don't need to care about so making things really really simple for them mm -hmm. um is definitely a big thing that i'm going to be changing when i go home is kind of changing like my protocol for when the dogs go home, it doesn't need to be so complicated. The way that I explain certain things doesn't need to be so complicated. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we were talking too about uh, go home lessons for board and trains. Um, my general schedule for a go home lesson is we sit down in the office, talk through all oh, the yeah. information <laughs> without the dog present. <clears throat> then we go get the dog. I do a little, well, we've already had a midpoint lesson at that point. So they already have heard a lot of that information. They already yeah. have had their hands we'll on the dog practicing some stuff. Yeah. Um, but then the go home lesson, now they're getting to use the e-collar if that's what we've used. Um, they're getting to hear a little bit new information, but they've kind of already heard everything and done everything. Mm -hmm. So I don't really do that much with the dog and kind of just hand the dog over to them and they practice everything mm -hmm. um but so mainly changing stuff for the midpoint lesson and i really liked seeing that go home lesson the first day that yeah. was kind of cool how that timed out yeah because that's the only one that we have this week obviously our next one isn't until next tuesday I don't think. yeah so i'm glad that that happened um, yeah. but kind of seeing everything <coughs> broken down so simple which makes so much sense because that's the way that i learn best too is yeah break it up give me a little bit let me do it then add a little bit more then let me do it then mm -hmm. add a little bit more. Let me do it. Um, so getting to see that and realizing for myself that, wow, this makes a lot of sense. Yeah. This is really how I should probably be doing things is not giving them so much information. Because what I've noticed is people tend to focus on something else that we said during the sit down <laughs> instead of what we're doing right there. And they yeah, getting sure. really mm -hmm. confused because yes. they remembered a different portion that has nothing to do with what we're doing right now, yeah. but they have all that information in their head and they don't really know what it applies to yet because we yeah. haven't gotten there. Mm -hmm. So taking things one step at a time, let's start with this, got it down. Okay. We're going to add something else to it. And then just kind of building same way that we would teach the dogs uh, starting with a little, right. and I think you said that yeah, when yeah. I was talking uh -huh. about it, yeah, yeah. like not, don't <clears throat> give them the entire picture. They don't need it yet. They don't know yeah. it yet. Start with mm -hmm. a little bit, let them understand it Add yeah. a little bit more, yeah, yeah. let them understand it. So that's definitely been a big thing for me is learning to really slow yeah. down and simplify things for people. That's so funny. So that it's funny that you brought up that analogy that I was bringing because I think that was the first time I ever explained it that way <laughs> to anybody, you know? And as I was saying it, it's funny because like I found myself, I was like getting excited about saying it because I was like, <laughs> damn, I need to remember that to say it again. And I actually forgot it until right now. So unless you said that, I would have never said it again. It made a lot of sense. <laughs> so so the analogy to, to kind of get everybody understanding what I said, she, I think you were asking, how do I get owners to not make so many mistakes? Is that kind of correct, what you were asking? Um, I don't remember. I know it had something or to do with that. Or like asking a lot of questions, uh, the same question over and over again. Something. Yeah, something I think it was lines. asking the same question over and over again. And you were like, you know, our clients are, they'll, they'll constantly do everything wrong after you've said it of like mm -hmm. repeating the command a lot and this and that. And mm -hmm. like, how do you help them to not do that? Right. Mm -hmm. And first off, there, some people are still going to do it, obviously, right? But the way I explained it is like when we teach a dog something new, right? Our goal is to block the dog's ability to make the incorrect choice as best as possible. So if I'm teaching a sit, right, and I'm teaching it with uh, uh, a food lure or whatever, right? I'm, I'm teaching a dog to sit. I am going to give the dog the absolute maximum amount of help that I possibly can so that their option of doing anything other than sit is gone away, right? And I'm going to allow them to do it successfully a handful of times, excuse me, with maximum guidance. So if I look at that from the standpoint of an owner, right? If I'm teaching an owner how to do a bed stay with their dog, 
right? <clears throat> I'm going to literally hand them the leash. I'm going to stop them from doing anything because a lot of people's natural instinct, the second I give them, I'm going to tell them, all right, we're gonna, you're going to work some bad states now. And I mm-hmm. give them the leash and they're just like, boom, they go for it, right? So before I even hand them the leash, I hand it to them. I was like, don't do anything yet. <laughs> don't do anything yet, right? Just, just <laughs> sit here and listen for a minute, right? So I stop them from making that mistake, right? And then I coach them through, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to walk up to the bed. You're going to tell them bed one time. You're going to let it breathe for a minute because I know their instinct is going to be to repeat it a second time right off the rip, right? If the dog does it, great. If the dog doesn't do it, you're going to mark with no, give a correction, give help. So I've outlined the process to them. Now I say, all right, go to do it. And then I literally walk them through it in real time. So walk up to the bed. They're walking up to the bed, right? Now say bed. They say bed. Now wait a minute. And I always stop them. Now wait a minute. Give it a second, <laughs> right? Because again, I know they're going to repeat it a second time. Mm-hmm. They're going to be really quick on telling the dog no, right? And then if they don't do it, all right. So now what you're going to do is you're going to tell the dog no, give a correction, help them onto the bed, right? And, and just just hold their hand through it the entire way, right? It's like you're talking to, to one of those fifth graders, right, that I was working with. They're teaching one of them something, right? Because you are. You're teaching somebody a totally new language, right? You have to treat them like they're like a fifth grader, right? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so then... As I've built on success with those repetitions of walking them slowly through every single step of things, so they've now done it successfully six times, I slowly start fading the lure. So the next step of teaching the sit with the dog is instead of a full lure and help, I give like a half a lure. And then I let the dog try something. And if they're going to make the, the, the wrong mistake, I stop them real fast. And then I help them a little bit more. And then I stop them real fast and I help them a little bit more. So maybe I'll walk them out. All right, now walk up to the bed and tell them bed right? And then they'll do that, right? And then if I catch them starting to repeat themselves, I'll stop them right away from it, right? And, and, and essentially, we continuously fade that lore until I hit a point where then I don't give any verbal prompts or any help to them. And they could successfully go through all those motions and they're anticipating what I'm going to tell them to do next and doing it successfully just on their own, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. <clears throat> so whatever, long drawn out way of saying, literally train your clients like you're training your dogs, Mm -hmm. right? You know as a trainer how to make sure a dog doesn't make a mistake and keep them successful. So that means you know how to make sure an owner can go through the process and not make a mistake and be successful. And if anything, it's 10 times easier because you speak the same language. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) So that's funny that you brought that up because, man, when I was saying it, I was like, damn, I was like, I've never said it like that before. (laughs) I want to talk about that. (laughs) But I think it makes more sense too because... As a dog trainer, obviously, like you said, we know how to train the dog. Yeah. But sometimes then we think about the human side. I'm like, okay, well, they're different. They're not dogs. So I have to explain it different. Yeah. When really you kind of don't. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. You just, you just, you're training two things at once. That's it. And that's the benefit of the board and trainers. We've trained the dog so we can just focus on training the owner then at that point, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, were you going to say something? Um, nothing important. Just say it. <laughs> I was just going to say, you know Bob Ross, right? Bob Ross. Like it's it's like imagine if Bob Ross you watch an episode and it's just the final like 3 minutes and he's like, "Oh, look what we created. Now you do it." Yeah. You know. That's a good yeah. point. Yeah. Oh, wow. And, and yeah. you'd be like, "I cannot, you know, it'd be like that yeah, yeah. picture right there." And you're mm-hmm. like, oh, "I don't know." But yeah. his whole thing and that's why he was so popular. You know, it's make it, it so simple. Yeah, so simple. Yeah. Like, oh, it's just these little swipes, and then yeah. oh, we have a, a happy little tree. <laughs> you know, but it's like the same thing. It's like uh, most of those people that watch this stuff, they didn't know how to paint. They, mm-hmm. you know, and then the people that come in, they don't know how to train dogs. So mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, take breaking it down because we talked about it before, and it's just like some people get so sciencey, and, and mm-hmm. maybe even like how you were doing, it, you were like, here's everything, like yeah. right away before we even see the dog, yep. and it's like, oh. Well, Let's take a step back and let's just go through it all together mm-hmm. in the little increments. And yeah, yeah and mm-hmm. it, and like you said, it's like our brains are kind of formed to take information in little bits and then yeah. memorize it, you know, instead of just here's the whole thing. It's like yep. it's like when you're or studying for a test, you know, it's like those people try to cram in the last like <laughs> two hours before the test. And I don't I don't understand how some people can do it, but I, if I did that, I'd be like. I remember like two questions. That's it. So yeah, yeah, just breaking it down easy you know yep. is is just more digestible for these people that aren't trainers yep mm-hmm. yeah and i think that's something not that i forget that they're not trainers but i think sometimes it's hard for me to remember what is 
common knowledge and <laughs> yeah. what is trainer knowledge. That's a good for point. sure. Yeah. That's a really because good I think before I became a dog trainer, I had a lot of experience with dogs. I mean, sure. I worked mm-hmm. in a daycare, I worked in a grooming salon. Yeah. So I didn't have like formal knowledge about dogs or dog behavior or yeah. mannerisms, but I kind of just learned by watching yeah. Yeah. a lot. So I kind of just assumed everyone else knew the same things, mm-hmm. which I sometimes catch myself still doing, assuming yeah. people understand all these little things when they don't and they sh- yeah. don't necessarily need to, mm-hmm. um, certain things. 